building your very own game engine is a lot of work especially if you're using vulkan instead of opengl and since i'm building my very own game engine i came across some very interesting concepts and one that stood out the most is plugins i am pretty much sure most of you watching this have either heard of the term plugins or have made a use of a plugin on one of your favorite editing software such as blender maya photoshop or even zbrush and if you just like me and have always wondered how they work and how how they are built then this video is just for you as we are going to create a very own simple plugin just so that we can understand the size behind plugins and why they can be so useful when it comes to building your own editor tools let's create a scenario so let's imagine you're building your very own game engine and that at some point you wanted to implement hot reloading at this point, your project only consists out of one executable file, meaning that your engine code and your game code are currently merged into one executable. However, for hot reloading to work, you will need to compile your engine and your code into their own separate executables. In this case, your engine code can be compiled into a dynamic library, also known as a DLL, and your game code or your client application can be compiled into an independent executable that will then dynamically link with your engine code at runtime, which in theory will enable you to quickly make changes to your engine code whilst the game is running and dynamically load those changes up in your game without having to close your game or client application at all. So how can we build such a system and get it working? Well, let's create a simple program to illustrate this use case. Let's create two folders one named client and the other named engine. Our client code will go into the client folder and our engine code will go into the engine folder. So for simplicity, our game engine will be considered as a plugin. So let's create two files. One is a C file and the other a header file. And I'm going to name them plugin to emphasize that we are building a plugin. Now open the header file and here we want to declare some functions. And since this will be compiled into a library, we need to export our functions so that our client application can search for them and make use of them at runtime. So I'm going to define a macro called export. And since I'm building the library for Mac OS, I'm making use of the attribute visibility default to export our functions. However, if you're building for Windows, you can replace it with DECL spec DLL export. So just keep that in mind. So now that we have our export macro, we can define some functions. And for this video, I'll keep it simple. I'll define three functions. One will be init, which will be called when the library loads up on the client. And the other one will be called shutdown, which will only be called when the library is unloaded on the client. And the client in this case is our game. Because I say that these functions will be called on the loading and unloading of the plugin, I will annotate them with attribute constructor and attribute destructure, meaning that I will not explicitly be calling these on the client, but they will be automatically called when the library loads up and when the library gets unloaded. And the third and final function I will define will be called print hello. And this will be an exported function so that we can call it from our game client. Next up, we will copy these function prototypes and implement them in the C file. All three functions will simply print out something to the console so that we can see what each one is doing. Next up, we can go into our client folder and create a main.c file. And since most plugins for Blender, Maya, and all your favorite editing software are loaded at runtime, we will also load our plugins at runtime too. And to do this, we simply need to make use of the dlfcn.h header. This is what we use on POSIX and Linux-based operating systems. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but for Windows, you probably use something else. So I'll leave that for you guys to research and find out what it is on your own, as I believe that this will improve your research skills as a developer. So let's move on and create two variables, one for the library name, and our library in this case will be called libplug.dylib, which is essentially our plugin. And let's create the other variable, which will basically store the handle to the library. And to get the handle, we simply make use of the function called dlopen. And we simply pass it the library name and the mode in which, in which we want to open it in. Next, we check if the library is loaded and we print out a success message. And 
and if it is not loaded and something went wrong, we simply print out an error message and simply quit the application. However, if the plugin is loaded successfully, we can query for our symbols, in this case our function addresses, and since we only have one exported function called print hello, that is the one that we will search for and load. And we will do so by calling dlsym, and we will pass it the library handle and the function name, and make sure that it matches the function name in the plugin, otherwise it will not find it. And then finally, we can check if the function exists, and if so, we can print a success message once more, and also call our loaded function from the plugin. Otherwise, if the function doesn't exist, we simply print an error and we quit the application. However, you guys can handle the error however you want. I'm simply just going to quit the application. And then finally, we can close the plugin by calling DL close and passing it the library that we wish to close, and that is it. So let's run this and see what happens. Now, I'm using make files to compile everything. However, you may use CMake or whatever build system you want. This is how my make file looks like for those interested, and I'll give you a moment to digest it. And do make sure you build the DLL and client application into the same folder. And now let's run the client. And as you can see, the constructor and destructor functions defined in the plugin got called automatically for us, even though we did not call those functions ourselves, nor export them to the game client. And if you look closely, we can see that the plugin print hello function actually works and prints out hello from plugin. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have successfully created our own plugin and implementing hot reloading from this point isn't as difficult as you might think. It's just a matter of creating functions to unload and load the library at a click of a button in your game loop and also store state in special cases I'll hopefully discuss in a later video when I share my own implementation of hot reloading for my game engine. If you enjoyed this video and learned something valuable, Valuable, kindly leave a like and subscribe for more content as it will help me reach a bigger audience. Thank you very much and have a good day.